Thank you for inviting me to be a part of the Hispanic Heritage Month celebration of the Rutgers School of Social Work. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Yolanda Padilla, and I'm a professor at the Steve Fick School of Social Work at the University of Texas at Austin. And I also direct the Center for Diversity and Social and Economic Justice, which is a center of the Council on Social Work Education. As we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, as social workers, we think about the place, the Latino heritage, uh, the place of Latino heritage in social work education. I think that many of us Latino scholars can pinpoint the first time when we encountered images of our heritage that didn't match our lived experiences. For me, it was my first semester in my community college. And in a way, right there, my whole academic agenda was laid out for me. I decided to write a paper for my English class, which I titled, The Assimilation of Mexican American Youth. I look back and while it's a wonder that I even knew words like assimilation, I was part of a rich and prideful prideful Mexican-American culture that had taught me many things. And I had what I tell my students is the most important tool for critical thinking, personal lived experience from which to draw upon. As I started to pull books uh, down from our library shelves for my paper, I saw in disbelief what was written about my community in books like William Madsen's The Mexican Americans of South Texas, a case study in cultural anthropology, and Celia Heller's sociological study, New Converts to the American Dream. Those images were so wrong and absurd. They were almost tragic comical and revealed a seriously flawed scholarship. All of us have seen these characterizations of Latinos, things like fatalism, for example. There is a difference between fatalism and knowing how to reconcile with life and move forward with a sense of hope. So I changed the title of my paper to Perspectives on the problems of assimilation of Mexican American youth and made it a critical analysis. Heritage is no small thing. Jose Armas, in one of the books I cited in my paper, La Familia de la Raza, talks about Mexican American families containing, quote, the basic elements of direction and foundation for a truly human way of life. So what it means for social work education to speak to Latino heritage is then fundamental. It's about teaching social work practice that is responsive and grounded in the lived experiences of the Latino, of Latino communities and who they are. When we don't know much about their lives, we don't know how to frame what we say to them or how to work with them. Heritage is no small thing. Any social work practice that is not responsive to the communities we serve will not only be ineffective, but it will cause harm. As Latinos, or as people deeply engaged in Latino communities, we have a very clear sense of what it means to be authentic about the lived experiences of communities. We have a lens that allows us to see deeply and to take in the lives of people. That lens can guide how we shape the social work discipline and profession, how we develop our curriculum, 
what it takes to create equitable learning environments, and how we conduct and use research. In terms of the first aspect, curriculum, our heritage suggests to us that how we teach makes a difference. We can't just give students information about people's lived experiences. We use stories and provide opportunities for students to discover for themselves and engage in the culture of communities. We provide mirrors where students can see reflections of themselves and windows through which they can see the realities of others. One of the most powerful ways to do this is through books. I created a library on diversity and justice in the Diversity Web, uh, Center website. It contains a collection that I curate and that I keep up to date of about 250 contemporary books. It contains narrative nonfiction, including memoirs and ethnographies, fiction, including literary novels, science fiction and graphic novels, and social analysis books by and about social activists. I use this collection in my own teaching. Students select books, select the books that they want to read. As one of the major proponents of using literature to teach about social issues, Louise Rosenblatt convincingly shows that beyond teaching facts, literature is a source, quote, literature is a source of insight and emotional liberation. And this is supported by education research. Another pedagogical approach to provide opportunities for students to discover for themselves and engage in the cultures of communities is the use of models. For example, I was moved by a seminar on self-care that Dr. Gia Kalikdan Apostol from Stockton University here in New Jersey gave recently to social workers working in the context of COVID in her native country of the Philippines. I thought it would be a powerful way to show students what culturally grounded practices sound and look like in action. So I invited her to create an abridged version of the seminar for the educator resource that I produced this month and which is up currently on the Diversity Center website. In the webinar, although using standard self-care, self, teaching standard self-care skills, Dr. Gia Apostol frames the approaches she uses from a Filipino cultural perspective. The self-care skills she chooses align with Filipino culture. Participants are encouraged to draw on their own cultural philosophies when they need to. A mantra, a proverb, a belief, a code, or a prayer to cling to. Indigenous languages are interspersed providing a source of validation for participants. The webinar resonated with me as a Latina, and I could see how it could do the same for people of other Filipino cultural heritages. Creating equitable learning environments is a second way that we can hold true to our heritage. We know that we need to be in intentional about this. It doesn't just happen. In order, for example, to build a faculty that is capable of actually serving the needs of Latinos, we need to rewrite our job descriptions, change our expectations for what cover letters should say, and create new interviewing rating forms when we are interviewing candidates. They all need to center on ways that potential faculty demonstrate their specific strategies and intentions to advance Latino student success. Finally, holding true to our heritage involves research. 
I have done research on the unexpected healthy birth outcomes, um, specifically birth weight and infant mortality of Mexican American uh, immigrant women, which are on par with non-Hispanic white mothers. The research shows that in part, the reason for these healthier outcomes are the healthy behaviors of Mexican American immigrant pregnant women in terms of good nutrition, low drug and alcohol tobacco use, access to family support, and high rates of breastfeeding. By the third generation, however, birth outcomes deteriorate significantly. So I, along with a team of researchers, conducted a systematic review to see if health providers acknowledged and supported these healthy behaviors in Mexican immigrant mothers. We found that for the most part, they did not and evidently were not aware of this critical health research. So not only did they not encourage the healthy behaviors in, first, in a second generation, um, in, in first generation mothers, they did not work with second generation mothers, given that the risk for poor health outcomes were had become uh, significantly higher. This tells us that we need to be vigilant of the sources that we use to teach about practice to our students. Are they based on rigorous current research? Social work curriculum, learning environments, and research shapes, shape our interventions. They cannot be divorced from the lived experiences of the communities we serve. And not only the social and economic conditions, but the cultural context, the world views which provide a lens through which they see life. Heritage is no small thing. Heritage is people's most precious legacy. Quoting Jose Arce again, it contains the basic elements of direction and foundation for a brutally, for a truly human way of life. Thank you very much. <laughs>